back to my channel. Today, we're gonna talk about tucking. Not that kind of tucking. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to do pin tucking, spaced tucking, hand sewn shell tucking, and then I'm going to show you two ways to seam together your fabric with tucks. This video is a part of my Fabric Witchcraft series, which is a fabric manipulation series here on this channel. Today's video is going to cover some basic tucking techniques, and then in one month I will do a follow-up video that has a little bit more advanced or different techniques using these basic techniques we've already learned. And finally, for a third month, I will do a video on making a garment with these techniques. If you would like to see those videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel. And without further ado, let's get sewing. So I guess we have to answer what are tucks, right? Okay, so tucks are slender folds lifted from the fabric and sewn at their base from end to end. The tucks can either be pressed or they can be left to kind of stay poking up depending on how you wanna use them. Um, something though that should be mentioned about tucks is they do add a thickness to the fabric, which is why they can and are pretty um, commonly used in like uh, petticoats, especially historical petticoats. And that's actually what we will be eventually making in this series. So let's talk quickly about what a pin tuck is. So a pin tuck is a narrow tuck that are sometimes only a pin's diameter wide, but are never seamed more than an eighth of an inch from the fold. So I've drawn some lines on here. The sample pieces we're using today are 10 inches by 10 inches, and I've drawn some lines on here. And the goal is gonna be to fold this and pin it, and we're gonna I'm gonna sew it one eighth of an inch. So I'm gonna do them one at a time um, because these are equally, uh, distributed, but also because I want to kind of show you each one. So I should probably have pins for this um, and I already kind of creased this, but for the first one, okay, but for the first one, I have my fold line and I'm actually going to pin my fabric or pin on my fabric kind of far from that line because we are sewing this down at 1 8 of an inch, I wanna make sure my pins are not gonna be in the way when I sew this. So I'm gonna try, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be using white thread and I'm doing a 2.5 millimeter stitch length and we're gonna sew 1 8 of an inch from this fold right here. Is our stitch line. And then if you see, I can open this up. I can leave it like that. I did press this down for the thread because I, I do want to make sure that my thread is nice and sunken and in there. And we can move on to our next line or we can press this out depending on how we want our tucks to look. I personally like prefer to, pin, um, to sew all of my tucks and then um, press them out. So now we are just going to, again, fold on the same line, and I can feel under here this other tuck, but I'm still gonna pin through to that side, because again, it's just so much faster to sew through it if the pins aren't gonna be in the way. So the pins will hold this for me and I don't have to actually worry about running into them, um, but I also don't have to take them out. So we're gonna do our second one and then I'll show you um, that and then we'll do the entire thing. Okay, so here are our two pieces or two strips of tucks. Um, something I did press these that way just so you could kind of see what they look like pressed um, and then also you can see here This can be a way in which your garment can look so what's cool about tucking is you can have the top Or the like you can basically decide okay Do I want my right side to be the part with the tucks? This is kind of what I did in my chemise for um, my Edwardian chemise or you can flip it over and this could be the top and it just looks like this really cool pleated fabric um, 
what's really great with all, I guess, fabric manipulation is the fact that you can manipulate it and you get to decide what side is top and bottom. So now let's get this all sewn up. All right, so here is the pin tucked piece. If you can see, I've only pressed these first two that we taught, we, you saw me kind of come over here and talk a little bit about, uh, and I have not tucked the other ones. Again, this is kind of a sewist's choice. You can choose to have them untucked. You can choose to tuck or un, you can choose to have the tucks unpressed or you can press them. Um, this is what the back looks like if you don't press it. And then these are the two that were pressed before. So you kind of get this like really cool puffiness. So again, this is, there's so many uses of this. All right, so here is our finished pin tuck piece. Um, as you can see, uh, they are flat um, and you can kind of see the raised edge on this side. And then if you flip it over, it kind of looks like a bunch of like pleats or something along those lines on this side, but they don't actually move like they are stuck in place. So this is pin tucking. All right, now we're going to talk about spaced tucks. Okay, so spaced tucks are tucks that are identical in width and visibly spaced and identical distance apart. So we have our one inch markings here. And what we're gonna do with these, a little bit different from the last one, we are actually going to pin it so our lines, um, this line is gonna match this line and they're gonna be our stitching line. And then we're gonna go from here this line will match this line to be our stitching line. So we will basically be having a, a tuck, a space, a tuck, a space, and so on and so forth. And they're all the same. Uh, it is a little bit tricky uh, to pin this without a um, tuck line drawn. So you could, if you had multiple color markers or if you just knew how you were gonna do it, do um, draw the tuck line uh, like that's gonna go here as well as the line that connects and that'll help guide you as well. Um, I just did it this way because I wasn't sure which piece of fabric I was gonna use for which techniques. So I was like, they can just be identical. And I'll just work from there. Um, but it is probably easier if there was a uh, the fold line drawn as well as the stitch line. All right, so here is uh, basically where we're at. This is how it looks. Um, as you can see, the tucks are a lot wider and um, the tuck, which the tuck distance or the tuck length is the combination of this entire folded section if that makes any sense at all. So this entire folded piece, so if it's two half inches folded together, that makes one inch, that is your tucked piece. And then the space between the next tuck is also one full inch. Um, and that is what it looks like. I've pressed it. Here's what it looks like on the back. Um, and here is our other tucked piece. So if you wanna get them side by side to get kind of an idea of what like a pin tuck versus a spaced tuck looks like. Um, you can also uh, do, you know, like you can play around with this. This type of tucking is the sp same distance, but if you wanted to, you could do something along the lines of like, maybe there's a two inch gap and then you would tuck for one inch. Um, the possibilities are really endless and they are all determined on you and your choices. So, um, shell tucks are narrow tucks with shell like scalloped edges shaped with thread carried over the folds at regular intervals and pulled taut. Shell tucks can be sewn by hand or machine. I'm going to show you how to do them by hand in this video. 
The best way to start a shell tuck is to plan out a spaced tuck. Half inch and quarter inch look the best, but for the purpose of this video, we're gonna use our one inch shelled tucks and I'm going to have my needle and thread and tuck, tuck my uh, knot inside this shell tuck. Then I'm going to take the very top of my tuck close to the fold and I am going to bring my thread through it and then once again I'm going to bring my thread through to the back of this fold and this is where I'm going to try to pull it taut and you can see it'll fold down. Now I'm going to do kind of like a couch um, around this but I, I personally with how tall this one was like to go through my um, fold up at the top. If you have a half inch or a quarter inch space, you could get away with doing it closer together. And then once my thread is back to the back of my um, tuck, you'll see here, you can start to do a little running stitch in between them. You can do this entire stitch by hand. So if you look at the row uh, in front of it, it's kind of what it'll look like. So you can do the entire stitch by hand or you can machine sew it and then stitch it down. It is once again sewist's preference, um, but you would just do a running stitch to connect the two and then again you want your needle to go behind whichever way you want your shell to go. Which also leads me to the um, next kind of idea that you could do if you wanted to is alternate the shells, um, alternate where this goes. Uh, you could, which would create like a twisted effect. Um, I don't do this in the video, but maybe I should do one just for funsies and post it on Instagram or something. You can let me know in the comments if that's something you'd like to see. Um, but basically you just keep going all the way through it. And there is the almost finished second row. I don't show how to tie this off, but um, I basically tied the last one in this row off uh, about tied it off. I just looped it around about three times and then I, you know, tie it into itself like you would end any kind of hand sewing. Okay, let's talk for one moment about seaming, not one moment, for a couple minutes about seaming together your um, pin tucks. Now, if you want to make a multi-panel pin tucked petticoat, the absolute best way to actually create this is by putting your panels together before you pin tuck them. So these are two completely non pin tucked panels and I really, you know, we're not gonna spend the, the time pin tucking them, but like if you were to say that this is the front and this is the back of the petticoat and it's gonna get gathered down, you would sew both of these ends together and then you would pin tuck them from there and you would obviously make your decision based on do I want my pin tucks to look like this or look like this, right? So if the if this is the right sides together and you want your pin tucks to look like this, then you're going to flip it inside out and mark where you want your tucks and you're gonna sew your tucks together like that. Now, when we go to make our petticoat, um, we, I haven't decided what era petticoat or anything like that yet, so we might do things differently, but that is kind of the best way to plan for pin tucks if you know you're making a garment with pin tucks and they are going to be lining up in the seam area. Alternatively, if you were making a garment and, um, I mean, I can't think of anything off the top of my head, so insert really cool artsy garment here and you wanted one panel to be uh, more of your uh, spaced tucks and then you wanted another panel next to it like attached to it that are your pin tucks but you want the, the pin tucks to go like down and you want your space tucks to go up you can also sew them right sides together do I have any pins over here? And then when you go to, you sew them right sides together. And then when you go to press them, you wanna press your seam open. So it would essentially be like something like this. And then you would also want to press one more time the direction of your tucks. 
and that is a totally acceptable way of doing it. What I'm gonna explain to you now, and I'll actually show it to you because I've actually prepped my pattern pieces to be able to show you. All right, did I do this right? There we go. We wanna combine these two pieces of fabric. They're the same type of tux, they're space tux, they are the same width, all of that. So in order to do that, we want to actually take and create a tuck with our pieces of fabric. So I really, I need to find the line here, okay. So remember our tucks on this are like so. So that's our space. So we want to line this space up with that, like this. So like that. So we have it like this and we are gonna once again stitch right here and it's gonna look like all of these were seamed together. So I'll show you real quick. It's a pretty uniform piece of fabric and when you flip it over, you have these little tabs here, but for the most part, it is a piece of fabric that has been attached to separate pieces to attach together. Um, it's pretty simple. Um, so that is basically all for this. And there you have it. That's some basics to doing tucks in fabric. If you would like to learn a little bit more about the math aspect or like how to formulate how much fabric you're going to need for how many tucks and that kind of stuff, please ask or comment below with your questions and I can try to find some resources for you to answer them. I keep math portions out of my videos because they are just boring and the one time that I tried to make it fun, it still didn't really work. So um, to kind of like, keep my videos from, first of all, not being super long, and second, for um, keeping your attention as the viewer. I have left most of the math segments out of my videos, um, but I can try to find you sources if that's what you would like. And lastly, I would just like to thank my patrons. My top tier patrons actually voted on this set of um, videos for this quarter, I guess, is what we could break it up. Um, so if you are interested in the kind of process and the decision making over on my Patreon is a voting tier where I say, hello, tell me what you would like to see. Or normally it's more along the lines of vote between this, that, and the other thing. Um, but thank you guys so much for your support. And if you like my content, once again, like, comment, share, subscribe, do all the things. Uh, I will see you next Sunday at noon with another video.